our dear friends and family, it's another exciting moment, it's another exciting day. You are all welcome. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you for your patience. We are indeed a great family. I appreciate you all for coming and waiting for us. And finally, we are here. So we just appreciate all the faithful ones and the new ones you're bringing in. And of course, this is Insights with myself, Lynn Nakamoto. Oh, I am not Lynn Nakamoto. Myself, comfort, comfort from the United Kingdom. And Lynn Nakamoto all the way from the United States of America. Anyway, I think it's, it, it's not a bad idea to exchange sometimes, right? So I think mm -hmm. there will come a time where there will be no difference between Lynn and comfort. So we can do that. So guys... Thank you for joining. And as you can see, we have a beautiful guest in the house with a beautiful heart. And I'm sure Lynn would definitely like to tell you more about Sister Helen. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Helen, we're looking forward to hearing your story. Um, you're just a wonderful, loving and kind lady. So we're, we're looking forward to hearing what you have to share. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to this forum. Um, I appreciate it. I would like, just love to share and let many people know, especially on perseverance, so that we will work in a large scale of what I used to do. My name is Helen Tala. I live in Maryland in the United States. I'm speaking to you right now from Washington, D.C. I'm right now at work but I've just taken a little time to, to share with everybody uh, my experiences so that we pick it up from there. Um, what is really interesting for us today is about these disadvantaged children. I was in the north of Cameroon, the specifically Garwa town, where we used to work, and I discovered this center where children who were born and thrown in trash cans or in, in toilets, uh, anywhere that they can find. And the social services or whoever found these kids, they bring brought them to the social services uh, who take off from there and try to make sure the children are okay health-wise. They take them to the hospital and check them out if they are okay or if they need treatments. They take them back to the center where they created for specifically for them. And that's where they'll live until fate will take them out of there. You know, usually oh. people will adopt them uh, to, to their homes or those who are not lucky to be adopted. They just live in that center and grow up there. So I got involved in, in this center. When I visited it for the first time, my heart went out for these kids, beautiful children who were abandoned. You know, there was a specific case where the uh, parents, this, this, this child, island. yes. Can you hear me, please? Yes. I yes, can hear thank you. You. yes, thank you. I understand that um, we, we are, I know that you are here to just pour out your heart, something that lies that deep down your heart. And mm -hmm. we, want, we want to walk through this like gradually because people need to know that something really happens like this story you are telling. Mm. So we would like to take you back a big, quick, really back around again. We'll definitely come back here, but we need to dwell on this and let our people know and so that we know where we're coming from. Once again, guys, if you're joining in, do well to share, comment, like, subscribe if you haven't yet. And this is insights, right? Whoever comes here, they share their stories to inspire us and they share experiences so that we have an idea what people go through in other parts of the world. And why are we doing this? Because uh, we have a solution through a business of ours, a prestigious millennial business called Unpassive. So guys, if you are joining us for the first time, stay tuned. The story Sister Helen is about to discuss to share here is very, very interesting. But sis, if you can, if you would like to tell us first more about, a bit more about yourself, because we have had this conversation, I think people would know where you are coming from, so that when you they finally land on your passion, they know that, aha, uh -huh, this is where it's all coming from. So how did you grow up? Just tell us a bit about that, and what, what are some of the things you have been doing, or what do you do, and stuff. We'd really like to hear that, too. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. I was born in the Northwest province in Cameroon, specifically in Kambe. I come from Kambe. That's my, my origin. That's where my parents live. I was born there, but I didn't grow up there. I, we were all over because my, my dad was a policeman, so we were moving from place to place as duty calls. So I grew up with six girls. We are all girls. <laughs> and two of them uh, have gone to see the Lord. Peace be to their souls. And four of us still are, are still alive. So um, I myself, I grew up, you know, like Gladys. I raised on with Gladys a lot because I grew up not having a lot. Right. I grew up in a poor family, but because of the good hearts of many people, they they always helped us out. And I went to school in uh, taught by Reverend Sisters. The school is called Our Lady of Lourdes. It's in, in Baminda town. That's where I went to school. That's a Catholic school where I was brought up in in a good way and appreciate my, my life there because we were taught a lot of uh, good ways to the way Ash wants us to be. We were taught in that school. So I spent five years there and went to high school some with the government and and the university. I came back here in the United States and went to the university and went back to Cameroon. Um, so I got married to my husband, Mr. Francis Tala. I have six kids who are all in the United States. So we are so blessed to be here, oh, all of you. us. So I appreciate it. I, I, I feel so honored by God to make, make sure that we are here. And it's, it's a bit easy for us. Um, I think that's a little bit what I do. Um, what I studied, I'm in the IT. I did programming, computer programming, and computer maintenance, so I can put pieces together of the your laptop and build it. But right now, what I'm doing, I'm in the health field. That I, I prefer helping people than doing the IT thing. So I help the people, help the the old and the sick. Mm -hmm. That that that's my passion right now. Okay. Human humanitarian. That's what I am. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Well, a big shout out to our best in the house, best friend and brother in the house, Tony Monk. You're welcome. And Auntie Lynn, uh, over to you. I think you would like to ask a question to, to Sister Ellen as we go. Thank you. Yes. So um. <laughs> How did you come to America in the first place? How did that work? Um, I came, I've been here, this is my second time. I came here before when I was younger. Oh. Um, my husband had a, a scholarship and we came together. And well, after he did his master's, we went back. Uh, <laughs> we were going back to come back for his PhD, but uh, the politics kicked in and everything was disrupted. The universities that had um, contracts with uh, university where my husband lectures, mm -hmm. the, that contract was canceled and we were stuck. <laughs> we couldn't come back here, but God was working in a way you know and we didn't know you now after you now i went back to cameroon in 1988 and i came back here in 2012. there's the lottery that uh, the american government uh, gives out every year it gets a, a good number of people who are selected to come to the united states to live and we were selected in 2012. That's how we came back here. That's amazing. <laughs> that was like yeah. fate, you know what I mean? It was meant to be, as they say. Yes. There's uh -huh. a reason everything happening. 
That's right. Well, you know, when we went back, I, I didn't feel happy I, because I wanted to stay here and do a lot more. Um, but it didn't work out that way. But mm -hmm. we, I kept on thinking my heart was always to be here. And God saw my heart and made it possible uh, we are here. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, in in our conversation earlier on, Sister Ellen, you have told us a few things we will, which we would like to dig deep, deeper into, so that our guests can hear and join in the conversation. Thank you, Lister Tua, for joining. Guys, keep on keeping on and share as you join in, of course. So you you told us that you you have worked with you have I think you've done it quite a few things, uh, Angeline. If you were listening to uh, uh, Sister Ellen, you've been in, in the education field. You, have, you are now in the health sector, you have done, you've worked in the humanitarian stuff and all of those. So tell us your experience with Save the Children. You worked with an organization and what something they call Save the Children. What was it all about? And what did you gain from there? What did you learn and how did it impact your life? Yeah, Save the Children, as the name goes, is saving the children who are disadvantaged. You know, a lot of children out there as we all are seeing, they, they don't have the opportunity to live a better life. So that Save the Children came in to try to get a few of these children to help the community through the children. So the children were selected and through those children, their communities benefited because um, the, my office used to they don't just go out and dish help. They work with the community heads and find out exactly what that community needed. If they need water, they will help to provide water. If they need health center, they provide a health center. It, whatever they need, uh, we try to get it. If it's a classroom that they don't have, they'll build them classrooms. Or is, is it a football court that they don't have? you get them a football court that the whole community will enjoy from that. That's, that's the, the lines in which we were working. Mm -hmm. uh, like with the health center, uh, those communities that needed health center, this health center was constructed and the first batch of medication was given to them. And the villagers were trained on how to manage the pharmacies the medication that was there was sold at a low price so that the villagers can could afford it then with the with those who needed water wells were being constructed that gave water to that community so they have clean water if the children have the families have clean water that child will be healthy that that was the idea thank you All right. so Save the Children was a needs space. They would just go into the community, observe what the needs were, and then fill those needs, right? Mm hmm That's very practical. While talking, they, need to, they, they didn't just observe. They, they, they took time to um, interact with the community heads. And they had used to call meetings and hear what the people wanted before going out to help them. Mm -hmm. So, so Save the Children is based in, in the United States here. Mm -hmm. And is it still active there, you know? No, I'm not still active because I mean, uh, what happened is uh, mm -hmm. the country office in Cameroon was closed and I stopped working with them. But since I came here, I've not really tried to look for them to continue. But I think I should now that we have Ampassive having the same ideas, I'm going to get back to them so that we do better than what they were doing. Definitely. How yeah. you, can I ask you, how do you think Unpassive is going to be helping in this way to accomplish your goals and your dreams? Yeah, you know, the, the, the problem is always uh, money that is not enough. And so not uh, the work is not done on a large scale. 
in in the case where i was in the north it was only the north but there are disadvantaged ch children everywhere so if the the on passive would, is going to help disadvantaged children all over the world because they will touch many children there will be means we will not be lacking means like uh, they save the children never they were calling on individuals as we always see they keep advertising on the tv for people to give just one dollar or, or ten dollars you know it wouldn't be at that scale anymore with, with on passive with the old place this is where old place will come in and we will help to help the children in a larger scale and the world will be a better place there will be no child left behind and not uh, educated because the, the parents could not afford it. Yeah, I think, uh, th thank you for sharing. It, it, apparently the needs normally are like uh, un almost unreachable because there, there's so many needs, it can be challenging at times. So what would be some of the challenges that you had doing this job of reaching out to these communities and so on? Why we need to know this is because people watching with us, so many people are passionate in what we say that others would like to partner with you when time comes. So if mm -hmm. you share maybe what would be some challenges and stuff like that, I think people need to know. The challenges, the first challenge we had is the roads. We used to take days to get to these villages, sometimes trekking. If you don't have the right vehicle, then you will not get there on time. And uh, you take many days. So there are no roads at all. In the north, in the extreme north where I was there, the roads are really not, not there. The few that are there, they have degraded. So we can say there are no roads. So that's the main, the first difficulties we had is that, that road to get to the children and to the communities where we were working. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right. Angeline, I, I, I have a, 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 a second question to connect to that. Would you allow me to do that? Then you, yes, you come up. Oh, yes, please. Thank you. So, uh, I, I, Sister Ellen, because what you have done and the experience you had of collecting babies from where they are, so on, we just want you to share a particular few examples. Is it like you meet the babies and the mothers uh, feeding from the bin, the rubbish places, or you just met babies being born abandoned here and stuff like that? Just explain a few of those and what we did so that we, we, we finally connect from them. Yeah, the babies usually are abandoned. We don't even know where, who, where the mothers are. We find the babies abandoned on the roadside by the trash can. You know, in, sometimes in toilets, and the, the neighbors will get this child out and bring it, bring the child to the social services. So we, most of the time, we don't know who the parents or who the mother is. Uh -huh. And there's one, one case, the the parents that child had both parents and had other siblings, but for some reason. They didn't want that particular child and said, uh, the parents said that child was a witch. Mm -hmm. So if, if the child, they kept the child, uh, they were gonna die. So it's better they, they take the child away. So they, they, they abandoned the child. Um, they, they, they were even arrested and, and they were pre prepared to go to, the, to prison instead of taking that baby. They said they won't take that baby. And that baby ended up in that center. <clears throat> it was so sad, you know. So the babies that are abandoned, are they pretty much mostly newborn infants that are abandoned? Or yeah, they are usually newborn babies, newborn, mm -hmm. who are so, very vulnerable. Newborn yeah, because babies. You, her, you know, they're rescued just in time, right? Because you, nobody can live without liquid and food for very long so yeah they just at the moment saved in time so i mm -hmm. just can imagine the, the condition of the babies when they yeah they usually malnutrition and all of that mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. they usually came in in very bad shape some do die because uh depending as you say 
if they didn't rescue them on time, they, they cannot make it in life and will lose the baby. It's, it's so sad. So uh, uh, it, this it's so disturbing. I, I I'm I'm not sure how much or uh, that were there times that you would finally discover parents of these children. Guys, if you are joining us here, Sister Helen is sharing is an experience. She has done a lot of stuff in life, and the point we are on now, she's sharing this experience where back home people would deliver children and dump them in been or, or, or you know dirty places by the roadside and so on maybe for one reason or the other so we are just trying to and she has worked with these people with, with a team of people to go around helping these children picking the babies up and giving them life so would there, were there moment sister helen where you you would meet the mothers is it is this mostly done by a particular group of women like teenagers or is it any woman who feels that i can't afford bringing up a child and they dump it and leave and it's usually done by teenagers because they don't they just found themselves pregnant and usually as we know the guys always run away and you are abandoned to yourself and you know it's a taboo back home when you get pregnant without getting married Sometimes even your parents will be so hard on you and you have that baby, you don't have any help. That's why they end up being abandoned. Um, people don't know that they can, make, like here, they find some somebody that can take care. Not We don't have that system. So the, the best thing they do is just leave the child somewhere where somebody can find. So back there, they don't have um, like social services like we have here. You know how if a teenager gives birth and too young to to raise a child, there's an agency usually in a local area that will provide support. Maybe take the baby, adopt, have it adopted. Now there's no, nothing like that in Cameroon. <coughs> there's so, this uh, no this agency to do that. This place where I'm uh, talking about is owned by the social services, but they don't work the way they do here. Uh, you know, teenagers, they have a mind of their own. Some will not go to ask for help. They prefer to do what they're doing. You know, there's a social service that is ready to assist. But if you don't come up front, how do they assist you in the crowd? You cannot know. Mm -hmm. So this place is being run by the social services and people like me come in and assist them. The social service don't have enough to take care. Like this, this center where I'm talking about, it was just, the place is not a really a big, big place, but they had so many kids. Yeah. One of the things that they will need in that place is a bigger bigger building where we could handle the the number of children that come in mm -hmm. and maybe get more workers to assist them do they also help um children who are orphans you know they don't have parents to support them, mm -hmm. do they have yeah. them too? yes they do those children just live there like their home and they go to school they pay, they pay for their school and they, they go to school. Mm -hmm. Some of the, the babies, are being, the people come there to adopt, those who don't have kids. They come and adopt. They come from all over the world, not only Cameroon. Oh. This other baby I talked about where the parents abandoned, that baby is in, in, in Belgium. They are depend I don't know who uh, who adopted them, but that's where they they were, they, they took him to. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Some wow. come to France. Uh, they go. They, the children go all over. Mm -hmm. yeah. My cousin, my cousin has uh, adopted one of these these babies. Uh, she's now ten years old. She she lives in Yaoundé. Uh, she's really happy with with the baby because she right. she didn't have any child of her own. 
and she got one from there. Mm -hmm. Wow. I also have a friend here who is interested in uh -huh. getting some babies from that center. So when we we'll, we'll kick off, when Ompasi will kick off, we will we'll be there. Get more Definitely. babies to be comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Aisling, do you have a question or do you want me to go first? You want to digest that? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm thinking, I'm kind of curious about Helen, about her background as far as like your have you done like online businesses in the past the things like that you know i'm kind of, kind of curious <laughs> yeah i've done online businesses when even from back in cameroon i try to work with health products and we were going nowhere <laughs> you what is there you have to buy these products every month uh there's a certain amount that you must spend in order to have any commissions. And usually that's where we get stuck because you don't always have this amount of money every month, no. <laughs> so you get stuck. So when I came here, I continued in that line with a, a few friends of mine. Actually, it's a friend who was doing this online business with me who introduced me to Ompathy. So. So when she came with on passive again, I said, no, please, we have spent already too much money. I don't have decided to stop. I'm not going to do online business anymore. It doesn't work for me. So she said, no, this one is different. Just do it. I said, no, I'm not going to do it. And she said, just give me your email. And she took my email and sent me the link and called me and we sat there, said, sit there, open that email, let's work together. That's how she forced me into Unpassy. And when the first um, webinar I attended, it was Charles Awesome. Mm -hmm. And since that day, I never stopped. I've been attending webinars, even at work. Most of the time, I listen in because I'm at work, I can't share a lot. So, but I've been crazy about it. I, I, I dream on passive, I speak, I eat. My family knows, they said, Dad, you're on passive. I say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they were tired of me doing online business and nothing comes out. I kept on spending money. Yeah. So I'm happy I found on passive. That's, that's, <laughs> and thank you to my friend, Stella. It's Stella that put me here. And all three of us that used to work together, we are in on passive. I'm so happy. <laughs> you know, the, the fun the, the fun time of on passive is going to come, Lynn. I remember one thing Dr. B. William used to say. The one thing about on passive, you can't keep it to yourself because three of us here now, if we are friends, like she is saying tomorrow, if both of you are on passive and not, you want to take a trip to Dubai, you want to go to Israel and stuff. Mm -hmm. I am going to work because I don't have that kind of money you have. That's mm -hmm. it's just because of that. Somebody needs to be here. So we are happy <laughs> that we're part of it. And yes. the good news here is how much it's going to go a long way to fulfill Mr. Ha Ash Mufare's heart, that of reaching out to the poor, like the ones you have just shared here. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you know, I know that you have mentioned a few things that you have done education health providing basic health needs and so on and so forth how do you think academy is going to be of use or of help in that kind of a community hmm you know in that the uh, academy is really for that community it's by that center there are already children who were not adopted they are they are grown-ups and usually they, they to pay the school fees uh, and by the school necessities is a challenge. So these children will benefit from that, from academy. All they need is a, a laptop and which we will provide. So these children will study to the level they want. That would be a, a great, a great joy for me. Wow. Yeah, because what I used to do, one of the things I used to do is provide uh, school uh, needs like books and pens and all for the kids so with academy that will be awesome awesome you know um i think like 
some people might not be aware about educational costs because like here in America, pretty much education is free, you know, up to high school, right? From t young mm -hmm. kids to high school, you can go to school and there's no, not, no cost to it. Well, maybe you got to buy school supplies, but that's about it. So can mm -hmm. you talk about school fees and how that makes a huge impact on a, on a family? and how much of a struggle it can be. For school supply? School fees. It, okay. In Africa, it's, it's a big school. challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like with, with, with me, when I was growing up, it wasn't easy for my parents to pay my, my school, school fees and get supplies for me. Most of the time, they just get a few and you, 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 you move on with that. You manage it sometimes with an exercise book and uh, we had to uh, split it into two for for two subjects because we couldn't get two exercise books so mm -hmm. you 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 share the pages so that you can you can write yeah so <laughs> that nice. that will be taken care of because most parents don't have and usually there are a lot of children so if you just buy a few books for each child and they go yeah most of the time the the children don't even stay in class for the whole year because of lack of fees they are sent out of class it's so humiliating when you are sitting in class and they come call your name that you haven't paid your fees so you can't come to school the next day wow. you have to go home yeah that's terrible mm-hmm Oh, I know Gladys Nabor. I think she's here as a attendee in this show today. But I know she shared about her life and that her she came from very humble beginnings. Her parents were wonderful parents, but they didn't have a lot. So mm -hmm. she struggled because she, I think she said something like she repeated the same grade three years in a row, mm -hmm. not because she wasn't smart, but because her parents couldn't pay the school fees. You know, so she was uplifted by a priest who decided to pay her school fees to go to a boarding school. So she mm -hmm. was very fortunate. But for the majority, you're not going to have people like that coming into your life to lift you up. That's more of an exception, I would say. But she talked mm -hmm. about the struggles that she had. So I was kind of, I just wanted to share that with the people watching today that it's not easy. The school fees are, can be a big big hardship to an average family yeah actually in that line the school where i attended and uh, they were run by the missionaries the reverend sisters is to it was to help children that are disadvantaged like my, i was one of them so you they they kind of subsidized the the fees you know some parents who are farmers for example they didn't have the cash so they they allowed them to bring food stuff because we were in a boarding school where we needed food too so the parents who didn't have the cash they could bring food stuff where we we'll used to to feed the the rest of us and the 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 council also that's the, the, the government, local government, it used to give some scholarships to those who were performing well. I, I had one from my place in, in Kambe. I had that kind of scholarship from a council that helped my parents to assist me in, in a Lady of Lords. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And today, yeah. you know, I was giggling when she shared something. Oh, I forgot about that, but I, I did that too, you know. You, mm. the, that idea of, you know, you get one book and you split it into two. Or if it's a very big ledger, you split even into four. If one is history, mm -hmm. geography, and then, you know, just in one yeah. book. And, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Mm. So, guys, why we're sharing this is because things have gone better and even much, much better. That yes. is what people, that is real. We are just sharing what we've gone through. We we're fortunate that somebody held your hand and pushed you there. And we are where we are today. 
and that opportunity comes where we can do even more than we ever imagined. Who will yeah. stay and hold your arms knowing that the baby is almost losing their breath in a bin, in a dog spin, in a trash can? You can't, right? Yeah. Because we have yeah. everything that we need. So um, I think uh, that's the best thing that Unpassive has done. But however, this is an empowerment platform, and we are so passionate about this, as Jaleen knows. I know you told us earlier on that as a Catholic woman and one of the leaders in the PWA, Cameroon uh, Women, Catholic Women's Association, you would help educate women and stuff like that. And given mm -hmm. the situation that is you have in those homes where you have those foster children picked up from here and there, do you think I don't I don't do you think that it's a, it's a possibility we can like empower some of these women who are also underprivileged because that's kind of empowerment creating jobs and stuff? Is there mm -hmm. do you think that there are women the women are up to the level where we can educate them and empower them to take care of these children? We open a center or stuff like that mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. go there and do it. What do you think about empowering such community? Because there seems to be so much happening that we're up to the task of changing things and turning things around. Yeah. Yeah, those uh, those centers, as you say, through the Cali Women Association, there were centers already created by the, the Catholic Church. So they, that's where the women were being empowered. They taught them whatever they can do, you know, they, and they learn some trade that they will use to help themselves on, on their own. Like there in the north, you have a lot of sunshine. Mm -hmm. they, they, they taught the women how to transform food so that you don't waste. You know, usually the storage of food is, is a problem. So you taught them how to transform like fresh tomatoes or fresh fruits. You taught them how to dry them. So that you can preserve and use it in 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 the hay days. Yeah, those centers they need more of those centers because the, the centers are not enough to cover the the needs of of the the women. <laughs> I know Gladys Nabora. She talked about you know the there's like a rainy season and a dry season, right? Kind of extremes. And the, during the rainy season is food but when it gets to the dry season um there's not much food and so mm -hmm. she was saying that storage facilities are what's needed so that mm -hmm. during the rainy season when there's a lot of abundance you can do storing canning you know packing mm -hmm. like that yeah. i thought that made a lot of sense and maybe we could empower mm -hmm. people to yeah. find means for them to store you know, store food. I thought that would be practical rather than just giving food all the time. You know, and I mean, instead of giving fish, yeah. teaching them how to fish, mm -hmm. that concept. What mm -hmm. do you think of that? Yeah. So they, that's that's what used to happen, you know. They, they teach them and you can go, like they teach sewing and that preserving of food that if you have that during the time where there's a lack they sell this food stuff uh, that is dried and is healthy. They, they sell it to those who don't have, and then they have a little money for for the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think the concept that of passive, in my opinion, is that we want to, as Comfort always emphasizes, is we want to empower. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. what is the root problem? What are the things that are these? The issues you see have root problems, a root for, for things to cause these problems again, and to identify these things first, and then address them, rather than just addressing the symptom. You you know what I'm saying? You want to get to the root cause of these problems. And we're hoping yeah. that um, passive will help us to do this. You know, the, yes. the platforms that we have, the products that we have, such as Oblast, Academy, and much, much more, are products to me that are really mm -hmm. going to empower the people mm -hmm. who have the most need. I mean, how, how, what do you think of that, Comfort and Helen? My, my thoughts on that. Does that make sense to you, how we want to empower people? Yeah, the, you know, the women, 
where you empower a woman, you are empowering the whole community. They say when you educate a girl, you educate the world. You know. So when if you empower the woman, the family will be in good shape. And the children also will not suffer. They will not lack in any way. Because the mother is educated and knows what to do. And so certain problems will not come up in life. Right, right. That's, yeah, that's, that's very true. I thought you wanted me to share a bit on that. Oh, yeah, I was going to just say that um, education to me is very important. I hope Helen comes back. Oh, there she's back. Okay. <laughs> is important, right? Because if you have an, uh, an educated population, they will be able to assess their problems and be able to address them. But a lot of times it's not a lack of motivation, but a lack of education. And education mm -hmm. is all about awareness and, and skill building as well. So I, mm -hmm. I thought that on passive through Academy, it's a real big deal. Academy is going to be a big, a big factor <laughs> in helping these communities who have huge needs. I'll, yeah. I, I think uh, you give me a minute. I have to attend to my patients. Okay. No okay. problem. Yeah, sure. Definitely yes. we're, we're there. So let's quickly yeah. see from our best in the supporters in the house. Thank you, Mira, for always being there. Mira yes. says, these two shall pass for these unfortunate children. We are coming to the rescue. Woohoo, we're heroes. Oh, <laughs> so the hurry. past will not hurt them anymore. I think is there a better way of putting this, Auntie Lynn? That's just it, isn't it? We're coming exactly. to the rescue. Yeah. Exactly. So the, the the horrors and the the sadness from the past, we can push it to the side, and we look forward to a new future that is very bright and full of uh, hope. You know, through yeah. our past. Yeah. That's the difference. You know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so one of the things, like you were saying, Auntie Lynn, guys, if you're joining us now, we're just looking at, uh, we're listening to Sister Helen sharing her stories, how she's gone through from her job of helping communities, the underprivileged people, to a church group where they would go around streets and trash cans on bins, collecting babies being born and dumped in the bin because they don't have means. And we are discussing that to understand that this is how much people go through in some parts of the world and the solution is in our hands. And that's what we're just doing. And I think you're very right when you say education because that is key, right? Education, education, education. And but when you say this back to my, where we come from, because it's just like everything Sister Helen is saying, I can see because we come like from the same place, you know. So education here, especially informal education, just telling them that in situations like this, you do like that, or you live, this is how you live in a community, in a society, this is how you do. That is very, very, very important before the formal education for the young children and so. So empowerment education, it comes in various forms and everyone fits particular needs. And those women, they can go places and to learn because I even grew up being an empowered child, you know, even I think you need to make me your guest. I don't know who would co-host with you and I'll be your guest, but you need to hear my own story. So I think it's a good thing, right? So we are we we we're, we're just feeling in while we wait for Sister Helen. Do you want do you yeah, want something you know, to education, say? as you say, is very, very key. You know, I came up from a parent a family of uh, educators. My mom and my dad were teachers, so was my mom's sister. Uh in Hawaii, a lot of mm -hmm. the Japanese, um, I'm Japanese, you know, a lot of the Japanese, the families emphasize you got to be a nurse or a teacher, you know, for the women or a secretary. Back in those days, that's all you could be, nurse, secretary, right. teacher, whatever. So my parents were teachers and they always emphasized the importance of a, an education. So all of us, three girls, my, me and my two sisters, we all have an education. We're grateful for that. And I do believe that my education has taken me where I am to where I am today. Not that if I wasn't educated, I wouldn't be successful. I'm not saying that, but education was this platform that enabled me to go to where I wanted to go. And I believe this 
path or this journey led me to this great company called Unpassive. I know, I know. You, you, can, you can read, you know, like Sister Ellen just said, before leaving, you know, she says when you educate a woman or you empower a woman, you empower the whole community, the whole world. You know, our sister Mira here, she surely be touched and she's like, oh my God, these are the kind of stories that make me to or give me reason to be impatient many times, which I understand, right? Because there are times you ask yourself, why should someone go through this, you know? when on the other side you know we have what we have our children have more than enough and on the other end it's so terribly bad that you, you couldn't even believe right however we are just very blessed and happy because we know where this is taking us to we can see that Peter Ellen is back can you speak so that we, we're sure that you're reconnected please okay hello okay hi good. there yes, yes. <laughs> yes. We, so we, we, were, we were just talking about while you were gone the importance of an education and how it impacts impacts individuals but as well as women and families mm -hmm. yeah That's education as i was saying before i left you know the when you educate the woman the family is it would be well to do mm. most of the time even even when the husband is not educated as the lady things are better because she 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 will do a lot better. Just even the finances of the family, she would uh, handle them better and make you sure everybody's. Power. Yes, when you empower you women, power. yeah, women power, <laughs> yeah. Because right. most of the time, we women we take care of the kids and the husbands themselves. So if you are educated, you'll be better placed to take care of the whole family in a comfortable right. manner, without stress, you know. You know, sometimes but the, the men will be uh, like feeling down because you are taking upper hand. But they shouldn't because if you have a woman who knows what to do, you should be proud of yourself and the whole family. Nobody will be left uneducated in the family because the woman knows the importance of, the, of education. No child will be left uneducated. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. True. Yeah, sure. So, uh, what we'd like to know, to Lynn, if you would let me, what we, we Lynn and myself always like to know and to share with our audience, of course, is on passive is that kind of a place that uh, uh, kind of no man's land because we all belong. We are not at the first thing our hearts go, our hearts go back home where the real thing happens. However, people struggle all over the world. You've mm -hmm. got two communities, your community ori of origin, which is home, where you came from. And of mm -hmm. course, where you live, that you live within a community out there in the United States. So yeah. what do you think you can do when on passive lunches, there's a lot in our hands. How would you be of help in your community where you live in the US? Yeah, I'll start with the, you know, most of the, I spend most of my time at work with with the patients different in different homes most of the time you see a lot of them in washington dc they are in a not in a good state they are mm -hmm. living in a poor conditions they don't have you know you see so many people in a tight space living together and and they don't eat well so when you don't eat well, you can't be healthy. So on passive is going to take care of this kind of situation where, you know, uh, Ash was talking about uh, 3D uh, buildings, you know, houses. I think those 3D houses will be of great help in, in my community here, uh, where people are really living in tight space with so many kids, the whole family and they don't have enough beds, so they eat junk food. Yeah, so mm -hmm. they are bound to be sick of hypertension, diabetes, all those illnesses, and so most of them suffer stroke because of that. So on passive is going to help out with situations like that. That's that's my passion. I started there. Actually, I have already uh, some patients in in mind that I'm gonna help out. Some are just sleeping on the couch. 
So people like that will need beds. Yeah. They'll need beds, they'll need food, they'll need a lot of things, you know. Mm -hmm. Even blankets, yeah, blankets to, to keep themselves warm and winter coats. And then they need all those. Yeah. They too have kids who need all those supplies and they can't afford it. They live on social security, which is insignificant for large family. Mm -hmm. Wow. And Celine, you, you know what, because of my only, before on passive came, or before COVID-19 though, my only burden here in this part of the West, in the Western world was street people in winter. I can't imagine how they see the next minute. You know, I think we all know that. But like Sister Helen is saying, we, we, there are times we, we have certain things and we take them for granted and not until you listen to stories. During COVID-19, I discovered that here in the UK, there were families where they could not afford one electronic device for children to study from home. Mm -hmm. That's how bad it is, right? Yeah. So that uh, I think we share this, guys, because we are partnering together. Everybody here, well, 128 left plus three of us. How many? We are partnering mm -hmm. to see how we can touch our communities. And my community here is not this environment where I'm sitting, it spreads to Japan, where you come from, to, to Africa, to anywhere, right? So imagine how much we can help people just around us. Do, do, yeah. you, do, you, do you share that thought, actually? Do you have an experience? Because we could share these things, people need to know, right? So, yeah. Well, you know, if you think about the power that we, the founders of this company, have, right? One million, so many positions in the company. But the power of that is that we all share a common goal and we have a common heart. And that heart is for humanity. And I don't think I've ever seen a movement like this one. It's really powerful. Just think about it. Everybody's on the same wavelength. When does that happen? Do you see that in any, any organization? Not usually, right? People are so different in their perspectives, but we all want to be helping to uplift to uplift the world. So I think mm -hmm. we, every one of us is going to be doing that sharing, the sharing that you talked about on an yeah. individual level. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. And really? in addition to that, sharing, right, Ellen? Sharing, but also having the means now to help as we want. Because many of us, we have the heart, but we're struggling ourselves. We don't have anything extra to give because we're mm -hmm. still trying to make a make make things make ends meet, right? But now yeah. on top of coming to us and all the the income, future income that's coming, that's gonna change our world. We're gonna change people's worlds, right? Yeah. Helen. Yeah, we're going to change a lot of people's will. Yeah. You know, I was talking, you, you asked about my community where I live. There, there's homeless mm -hmm. everywhere. There's homeless. And there's a center here where they feed them. They give breakfast and lunch. And then you take care of dinner. You, most of the time, they, they go to bed hungry because you don't have much when they give them in that center. Um, the ex-students of Our Lady of Lourdes, who are here in the United States, uh, specifically here in the uh, DMV, that DMV, mm -hmm. that is the, um, the three states here, Maryland, uh, DC, and Virginia. You know, we, once a year, we go to that center and provide food, and then assist the workers there to feed these people ourselves. We get the food and distribute. They, they cook the food and we help distribute to the to the hungry. But mm -hmm. after they, they eat, they leave. So when they leave, where do they go to? You know, we can't keep providing them uh, small meals. So we need to get them settled so that they can help themselves to find out what they need and and try to provide the first step and teach them how to 
to to leave some of them are on the street just because of uh they miss a payment a rent payment for a month and that that was it it put you off and you find yourself on the street yeah so some are educated they had jobs so you can get them back into the job market it will reduce the homeless where we are because i yeah. think that um, having a place to live to me it should be a universal right it just doesn't seem right that people are hungry have no shelter i don't think mm -hmm. that's the way the world is supposed to be you know and and with on passive now we do think there will be a huge improvement in people's lives mm -hmm. all around the world it's gonna like as i said it's a huge move movement Maybe people don't see it now, but they will see it as things really do change for mm -hmm. the better. Yeah. It's yeah. exciting. Right. right. No, you're right. You yeah, know, we get it. We have a contribution from Sister Gladys says empowerment is key. It's key. Like those who can learn a skill will definitely benefit, of course, as well. That's that's very true, sis. That's just yeah. our, our hearts, our burning desire here get everybody going by themselves because we we know the importance of this so, yeah um, I agree with that as far as you know, comforts has always emphasized empowerment as being a very important thing and not only empowerment in terms of um, teaching people skills and being able to be independent that also but as well as think about the self-esteem right when someone yeah. is able to do for it's themselves, special. what happens? They become mm. uplifted spiritually, emotionally, mentally. And isn't that what we want for the world? We don't want people to feel like they're grateful to us because we give them handouts. That doesn't exactly. make sense. Mm -mm. That person feels lower. Their self-esteem goes lower, right? We go on depending yeah. on people all the time. But if you can get them to do for themselves, oh my gosh, what a shift that's mm -hmm. going to be. Yeah, right. I agree with that. Yeah, the self-esteem. You know, we don't always look at that, but it's it, it's a a big thing because when you don't have your self-esteem, you are always demoralized. You know, even when they give you help, it, it doesn't really help you out because you want to do it. Everybody wants to do something for themselves by themselves, not handing out. Yeah, if you can do it, you know. They are no when when you go to work and you get your salary, you feel proud. But if somebody gives you gives you money, it's not the same thing. Yeah. A, so empowerment is a key. Empowerment mm -hmm. and then the, the feeling and, of and lifting up the yeah. yeah. <laughs> the right? self, Everybody the, has the a dignity, right? So <laughs> yes, like, yes proud about what they can do for themselves and we want to make sure we give that to everyone that sense of mm -hmm. dignity mm -hmm. yeah well yeah sure the good thing is that uh we have everything that it needs to reach those you know, to meet those needs now everything that it takes we have it mm -hmm. right here in our arms and everybody's just warming up right to get yeah. their, their, walk, their walking shoes on yes. and start going because I, I, I can't, I can't, I'm trying to imagine the, the deep that I'll penetrate. Nobody has an idea what is in my mind. I'm sorry mm. for you, little, because there are some of those places we walk together. I don't know how long you can walk. <laughs> you need to come with us at time. So that's how sweet it is. And of course, we, we are ready and we are going. So, uh, Sister Ellen, we would like to give you the last uh, minute now because we know that it's hot, hot, hot with our business. And we are yes. just trying to encourage everyone, if you have not got locked into your back office these days, you are missing out on a lot. The moment you sign out of here, please log into your back office and read the update, see what's happening, and just get excited, right? Uh, yes. I was discussing with a friend, I wouldn't call her name, she's watching us here, though. she says she has already tabled her resignation. <laughs> because she's ready to just start going, you know? Going, so I yeah. think so many people are doing that. We're not saying that you should go and resign your job anywhere. We're just saying how people <laughs> get excited and they say that, right? So a yeah. lot is happening. 
However, uh, sister, then we, we, we still have, uh, you know, the motto of the first school is that nobody shall be left behind. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there is still a huge opportunity for, for someone to be part of this movement, of this uh, revolution. So what advice do you have to people who do not have the chance to become founders? What do you want yeah, to tell those, Yeah, those who did not have a chance to become a founder, which was closed in June, we still have a, a lot of opportunity to do it. Right now, we have cases where people registered and they couldn't pay and they are not interested. So if anybody's out there and still has the passion, as we have been sharing every week, if you have the passion to do, to work with us, to do what we've been talking about, to do what we are waiting to start uh, helping humanity. This is a chance, just get to a founder and they will let you know how to get connected, how to be part of this movement. You will not be a founder, but you can still uh, be part of it. Do you still have, those who do business, you have the reseller position, which is coming up, you prepare for that. And there's the customer position that you just want to be customer. You still make money being a customer. So you still have the chance. Don't be left out and tomorrow you start regretting. I tell you, there will be regrets if you don't listen. If you think we are here joking, then uh, you will cry. You have only your own eyes to shed the tears from. Uh, you won't say, don't leave the thing to chance. Don't say, had I known. Do it now. Get up and be part of it. Yeah, you'll be wondering why we want people to be part of it. It's because we have seen what is there. I know that humanly, we like to be comfortable. So if you be part of this movement, your family will be comfortable, and then you have what to give a helping hand to another person who didn't have the opportunity to be part of the movement. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And Celine, yeah. would you like to add something really quick on, on the, this reseller and, and customer position so, so that we round up, so that we don't keep our people waiting? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, uh, sorry. Um, the reseller and customers, okay, when just so that when uh, the company starts selling products to the world, these are digital products, that everybody who wants to come to passive they have to come through a founder initially. So this is a good thing. And um, you all you have to do is connect to any founder of this company. You'll be able to become, first of all, a customer. And just remember, when you begin as a customer, there's a lot of free products, many, many free products you will be able to enjoy. And then at a certain point, you're going to say, hey, I like that product. So mm -hmm. I'm going for it. I want that product. So as then you'll purchase products and then at a certain point you'll realize that you can earn there'll be a wallet and you're going to see earnings in there and for you to be able to earn that money or take that money out all you got to do is become a reseller and it's a simple process so you'll have the option again to either be a customer but many people will elect to become resellers so they, they can make money because the, the system is automated it's a done for you system where artificial intelligence does everything on your behalf. So all you have to do is get in and you're going to win. That's why we say we're in it to win it. Everybody yeah. wins if you come into Unpassive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we are in need to win it. <laughs> I was talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I know this, this is on passive. We can stay here for the next 48 hours. I will never mm. finish talking. So we <laughs> just want to thank and appreciate everybody who, who joined us again today. We would always let you know that uh, this show makes meaning because we what we run it as a team. It's not about Lynn and myself. It's about all of us, and you matter to us more than anything. So we really appreciate Thank you, our superstars who are always supporting us in the house. Thank you, Mr. Rob Gorman, uh, 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 Tony Monk. Thank you for being there today with the great co uh, uh, contributions. 
Pat Parents, Mira Collins. I saw Collins. I, I hope he's still here. He's been dropping comments, but because my screen was tiny, I could not manage much today. Guys, bear with me. Next week, we're going to do much better in getting you really actively involved. We thank you all, guys. Thank you, Sister Gladys. Thank you, everybody who joined us today. We really appreciate, and we we'll see you again at the same time next week, next Wednesday, as and we before, get ready for the greatest shapes of our lives. Adeline. Yeah, before we end, I want to make sure that we thank Sampat Patel, Lou Pender Servi, uh, Ik Paul, as well as a number of uh, founders that have decided to support us and promote our show. And we're very grateful because the word gets spread through social media about this show. And we're getting more and more people coming and we're having a diverse array of people. This, but this is what it's all about. This show is about diversity and uplifting everyone. So thank you to our, our supporters. There are many more supporters that are, that are working behind the scenes to make this show successful. So we wanna thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Yeah, and most especially, thank you, Sister Ellen, for coming and taking the courage to share your story, your real story from the heart. We really do appreciate it because it goes a long way to inspire many, many people. Is that right, Antelia? That's right. You inspired so many. I know it. And just think about this. This show is a recorded. So for months, years down the line, there's going to be thousands of people tens of thousands and maybe hundreds of thousands eventually who are watching this recording and getting inspired and getting educated and this is what this program is all about mm -hmm. thank you thank you for inviting me thank you <laughs> no, thank you all right thank you guys and love you all see you soon Bye. join us next week same time next week yeah next week thank same you. time yes mm, bye bye